This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high-quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. Howdy, howdy, howdy. It's me, Lapidary Dave, here in the Empire of Dust. Uh, we bought something, and you know what it is by the thumbnail, I'm sure. I'm buying more goofy stuff that I don't need to make videos for you. Hopefully you like. Make sure to like and subscribe. Liking totally helps. Subscribing is really important. I think it says only 11% of people who watch are subscribed. A lot of you can't, or a lot of you don't want to, but those of you who can and don't have a reason not to, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. It totally helps. I really appreciate it. So, this is a bow drill, pump drill. How do you, what do you guys call it? Um, on the Amazon site, or no, eBay site, where I bought this, I think they even referred to it as a dory. Um, yeah. Weird. I paid $42 too much for this thing. <laughs> it's kind of like a little silly expensive for what it is. But I think it's super neat. I have zero expectations for this uh, doing anything that I would expect it to. But we're going to have some fun and we're going to check it out. Uh, worst case scenario, I am sure this thing will start a fire if we need it to. Uh, the shaft is straight, which is important. This is the weight that maintains the momentum. Uh, don't know how to put it together, but there's a video on YouTube that I've been watching. I'll be sharing right here right now. That really shows you how to do it. And in that video, they're drilling some metal. Metal's easy. Metal's soft. Especially copper, silver, and gold. But we're going to try to drill some stone. That's, that's, what, that's what we do here. We drill stone. Uh, it's, do not need this. I have one of the world-famous Gunther multi-drilling systems. And soon to have some of their drill presses. And don't need this thing. Um... This is 42 bucks. This was like $9 from Walmart. And these are killer. I like these. The upgraded version, which I think is like 18 watts or whatever. This one's eight. is like 30 bucks. A little bit bigger, but we're going to be doing a review on that sometime soon because I think it's a lot more powerful. Holds a charge longer than this. But we bought this because it's fun. People care about hand-drilled beads. I promise. Um, when I'm at gem shows and I'm talking to folks about old Native American jewelry or even modern takes on Native American jewelry, um, when the beads or he, she, or even, uh, some of like the, uh, inlay relief is done without power tools, people love to tell you. Um, here's the thing. Every time I've ever seen a necklace or beads that were drilled by hand without power tools, somebody told me it's a great marketing pitch. It's really cool. Um, people have been drilling this way for thousands of years. I know some native cats that still drill without power tools. I don't know if they're using one of these. I couldn't find any videos of people drilling stone like this. There's lots of videos of starting fires and drilling wood and metal. But not stone. Uh, yeah, I'm stoked. It comes with two grommets, right? Is that what they're called? Grommets. One that's completely sealed, which is awesome. Because, I mean, that's clamped completely closed. That's what we would put, like, dental burrs in. The really tiny 16th of an inch. And then this one is ugh, covered in grease, is what it is. But <laughs> this one is... Oof, greasy. Is what you'd put the more traditional, like, what is it, eighth inch burrs into? Uh, I'm stoked because I feel like the picture I saw, the grommets were like big. 
and um, <clears throat> we're more for like wood birds, like big wood birds, like Makita and like the the Walt like black back that you'd buy. So it's kind of perfect for uh, the birds we're going to be using. Now, how authentic is using a pump bow drill <laughs> with a modern mass produced steel um diamond plated burr from Shenzhen. How authentic? A little bit more authentic. I think it matters. It does matter. <clears throat> In the future, maybe we'll make a video of us using like a piece of wood and some silicon carbide dust and we'll, we'll pump through a uh, piece of stone or something. But in this video, we're going to use diamond burrs. It's the same old diamond burrs that we use in our dremels and our flex shafts and stuff. A lot less impressive, but this is cool. For those of you who want to make things authentic, this is awesome. I am working on looking into buying some pedal-powered bench grind, old old bench grinders, and that it would be so easy to manipulate into lapidary grinders. I find them today, but they're like two thousand bucks. I want to find um, a modern old one. I do see a hand cranked, um, ratioed, geared ratioed, hand cranked grinder that goes like at the end of a table. But that's not quite what I want. I want pedal power, like they use in Myanmar and stuff. Uh, I think all those are handmade, so it's not like I can buy one. Unless you guys know someone, I can contact in the J District of Myanmar to uh, sell me one of those really cool saws and grinders that they use with bicycle pedals. Anyway, all right. Uh, I have to watch the video to remember how to put this together. But I'm going to put it together. <laughs> but I have to watch the video first. All right, we watched the video. In the video, uh, they're using a steel bit or some kind of metal bit to drill metal. But the thing is, this 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 contraption drills one way, then spins back the other way, which will kind of ruin the burr. It'll destroy the sharpness of the burr. Perfect for diamond bits, though. And uh, other bits that don't have a direction to them. Anyway, so what we do here is we tie a little knot. A little tiny knot right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how well the knot should be tied. We're going to go like this. Just feels like a cheesy cotton rope. Definitely not $42 worth of rope. And we stick the thingy in there like that, yeah. Well, when it, they want the knot in the video is on the bottom. We're gonna moisten our cotton ropey thing, and we're gonna get it in here somehow. Yes, boom. All right, then we're gonna pull it, get it through the wood. Yeah, we're doing it. This is like the Boy Scouts. But better. Because I don't have to sleep. I don't have to camp. Camping's fun. My friends do like a rafting adventure thing where they play music for the rafters. And uh, I think they like make... Ugh. <laughs> I think they like make the tents for them. Okay, so it looks like the knots come right through. Uh, they need to be doubled up. I don't know if I need to cut these or not. I'll be right back. All right, folks. I've been making the video for like two hours now. And everything started falling apart. I couldn't figure out a lot of things. The string broke on the pump drill. And I've tried out like five, six different things. Luckily, I did find out that... Uh, shoestring is the best replacement. Uh, I tried probably five or six different things. And shoestring works fantastically. A uh, problem that I had at the beginning of the last time I was attempting to make this video, so I'm pretty much starting over now, was the, f the first thing was the string was falling out 
from the holes here because it was too thin. Unfortunately, the thickness of the metal up here and the wood down here are different. Uh, so I just use these little nuts. I've been using them for a couple hours now. They work really well. Um, this up here, this metal is actually ripping the strings. Maybe get some shrink wrap or some nylon or like deburr it somehow uh, because it's, that's like the biggest problem with this pump drill. Um, then when I was putting on the bigger grommet, I was finding that it was hard for me to get larger burrs in. The smaller burrs were no problem. Uh, so I had to just like take an Allen key in there and like bend these a little bit. They just need to be worked a bit. They're really kind of cheap metal, but really sturdy metal. And so after we get it on there, put it in there and this, uh, this thready thing, the threaded chuck will pinch it back down onto the burr. You kind of do want to use a pair of pliers to tighten that up uh, so that everything's nice and tight, especially if you want the burr to stick out a little bit. Okay, so that was just the general problem with the pump drill that I kind of finally got used to. Uh, the second problem I had was how do I get this thing to not just spin across the entire surface of what I'm working on, you know? Like if it wasn't hard enough for me to get this thing to spin, to get it to not move all across the work face was tough for me. <clears throat> um, I finally just gave up on one piece to see if this could even drill stone, use the, the Dremel to create a divot to do a piece of turquoise. And that was this piece here. It drilled through it in, in no time after I finally got a divot so the workpiece wasn't going through. The second piece I did, which was the second piece of turquoise, I just took a diamond burr and created a little divot, like I awed it in there. The third piece, this piece of lapis, you could still see the little cross I made in order to keep the piece from working. This took me about 15 minutes, good 12, 15 minutes to get all the way through. The blowout on the back is a lot less bad than I thought it was. Well, excuse me, thought it would be. Um, a good stone, you want to hold it up to the light so you can see through the stone, like the light coming through the nearly drilled piece. Um, even opaque stones, you can see the light through when it's getting close. The lapis was a little tough, but the turquoise was easy. The way I finally figured out to not have to awe the piece, like scratch in a little cross in order to make it work, um, was me actually using another piece that I already drilled. Excuse me, let me get this out a little bit. I do like the burr to be out just a bit feels good that way. So what I did was, just as an example, I took a piece I already drilled, laid it on top of uh, the workpiece. Let me try to get this angle for you folks a little bit better so you can see what's going on. And I used the hole as like a guide to create a divot. After I had my divot, I no longer need that and it's gonna stay in place. And now it's just patience and uh, consistency. If I push too hard, it bounces off. There is like a magic ratio between how long you want the string. I think my strings are a little long right now. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm starting the whole video over. We're going to drill this piece of turquoise again. Uh, this is a beautiful piece of Kingman. Actually, let's drill this Kingman again, because this piece is already nice for a bead. And since it's kind of in the middle, uh, it'll make a good bead. And I could say, hey, I drilled that by hand. <clears throat> so this one. We're gonna we're gonna start with this piece of kingman here. <clears throat> I'm 
just like the other piece, we're gonna lay another stone down that we already drilled to make our divot. We might have to shorten this string because it's being a pain in the butt. I think it's a little too long. Let's see. That black is uh, the pyrite in the Kingman. You can see here, we got a nice divot in this Kingman piece, much lower quality piece. Using a spray bottle to get the water on there, and we are gonna drill all the way through. If we're cool kids, we will stop and we will uh, meet it to the back. No promises though. <laughs> Let me get this to where you guys can see it better. gonna shorten this up. I thought I can get get away with it being uh, too long, but we're just gonna shorten it up. I'm gonna do that by just throwing this nut through itself really quick. Uh, there's a Wikipedia picture of a gentleman using a bow drill, drilling turquoise. That thing is a hand illustration. And he actually does it on his knee. Obviously, he's using some kind of, like, rawhide. I don't think the lubrication is as important when you're not using diamond. You know, back in the day, they were just using, like, stone awls, stone needles or something. That was just stronger than the turquoise to go through. Now we're using steel with diamonds, pretty wiped out from the lapis. I'll show you how much we did that fast. Uh, quite a bit. I think we're almost halfway. But we are gonna just change the burr. Um, just because it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty wiped out. The gentleman um, uh, drilling on his knee in that illustration, also his momentum wheel is stone, which is awesome. I believe it's quite a bit bigger than this steel. Um, is bigger better? Is a stone that's too big gonna break your rope because it's too much momentum? Because essentially it needs to go one way and then it spins back the other way. Uh, there's gotta be some kind of magic ratio between how big the bow drill is and um, how big your steel is. I mean, your uh, weight. We are almost through, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish with this worn out bit. We'll get a fresh one for the lapis. I don't feel any grit, and but I do see some stuff coming out of the center there, Let me bring you in a little bit better. Without hitting my phone, try to give you guys a good angle. You can see the uh, getting like hazy. We're definitely grinding through. All right. We are so far through, we can see the light on the other side. That's when you really want to uh, flip sides. Now, 
I guess the best way to do this would be to get a Sharpie, hold it up into the light, and mark it that way. Let's go for it, I guess. <laughs> Initial keep down the blowout. Now, like I've showed before, the blowout's not so bad on this. It's way less aggressive than a uh, hand drill, drill press, rotary tool, or flex shaft, especially when you're drilling through a rough side. It's not that bad. But it is the way you would drill to be a little bit more professional. And so for those of you that want, you want it to be clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting it through the piece. I'm going to lay it down on the spot, put the thing down, and hope that I get some kind of accuracy. Did I move? Yeah, all that black there, I'm drilling, uh, that's the iron, the steel, excuse me. And my divot is completely not in the right place. So this is pretty much completely worn out so much that the metal is grinding off onto the resin. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch burrs. We're gonna knock this out. Ah, let's see what happens. Well, let's just try, come on. Maybe the, the metal alone will break through the resin. I do see some, some wet dust on the surface. Yeah, we did it. Boom. Yeah, I'm happy we finished it out without switching burrs. All right. <clears throat> Let's look for the blowout. Way worse than the others. Oh, not so bad. Actually, that side on the left is the divot I made. I was trying to go through the back. So not that bad. All right, we're gonna switch burrs. And now we're gonna do a piece of lapis. All right, we're using a smaller burr. So I'm using the smaller grommet. Um, I had to like pry it open because it was she sealed shut. And then with the Allen key that I pried it open, I kind of bent, bent it open a little bit. Uh, you might have to do the same. Anyway, that is in here. This is in there. All right. Now, last time we drilled the lapis, we uh, drilled through the middle of it is pretty deep. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to go a little bit closer to the side. Uh, the all the alling idea was fun to have to figure that out and scratch that in there, but what a pain what that would be for agates and jasper. <clears throat> I'm going to clean up my mess a little bit. All right. Fresh burr, I think it's like 80 or 100 grit. I'm gonna lay this down on there like we did last time. Let me get you guys a better angle. Oh, this is tangled at the top here. Let me untangle it, there we go. We got our div. All right, we got our divot.
because it's in real time. Uh, yeah, you know, stone is the hardest thing you could possibly drill. Metal, even steel, is way easier to drill than um, stone. Even though we're using a diamond burr, it is super satisfying. I think it's a good idea to lift up and clean out your hole and clean off your diamond just as if you were using a rotary tool or something. A couple millimeters in there, I'd say about two, three millimeters in already. About, about four millimeters now. Definitely halfway. Am I through? I thought I was through. It's in Maybe I'm pushing the burr into the drill. I can see from the blue there, not the bottom blue, but that top blue down. That's how deep we are. I think we did push ourselves in a little bit, but as long as we're not grinding the face of the truck, we're all right. see any light through it. I think it's just the nature of the stone. We did, we pop through ever so slightly. I was wondering why it was binding up. When it starts to get to the end, more of the diamond is kind of like gripping on to the sides. So it's just easier to do that at the end. And that was oof, drilling lapis. The bow drill. One thing left to do, and it's the hard stuff. We're gonna drill this beautiful 
piece of Royal Aztec lace <clears throat> by hand uh, in a good spot so that when we cut this, we can use the whole um, to incorporate it into our jewelry. Yes. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's a pain in the ass. It's worth it. I'm having fun. You know, there's a lot of people who do appreciate taking the time to drill it by hand, especially when it comes to uh, turquoise. These hand-drilled beads. And not, you know, with a Dremel. Now, this won't replace a really nice, you know, Gunther water swivel. It won't replace a sonic drill. But it's fun. And maybe your customers would appreciate this kind of stuff. Anyway, up next, Aztec Lace. All right, now for the hard stuff. The Royal Aztec Agate. Having a hard time starting a pilot. I think I have to drill a smaller hole because I'm wearing these ones out. So I'm going to just go ahead and use the divot I already have there. This is going to take a while. <laughs> Definitely cutting. Slow and steady wins the race, for sure. When you get it going, it's very satisfying, but until you do, I gotta say, it is extremely frustrating. Thank you. 
I'm ripping through the shoestring. You can see the black down in there maybe. That's steel. That means the diamond is pretty much whipped out on this burr. It's a little big, creating a lot of friction. It's not wanting to rebound. Maybe I'll just spin it by hand a little bit. Kind of reduce some of that friction, maybe, so we can spin. I don't know. I'm kind of all out of small doors. Let's play with it for a while. Try raising up the rope a little bit. That might help. There we go. doing a thing.
boat is getting hot. I think we're getting really close now. You can see it through the back without even having to look at it in the light. But it is being very difficult for me. being really tight. Starting to see the black again. That's the um, steel, unfortunately. I just want to chip away at that little spot. Let's pack it. <laughs> That's impossible. What am I even thinking? Be over with. Newber. That's the sound I like. We did it. I gotta say, I am a little disappointed. A lot of disappointed that we didn't start the pilot. Uh, we didn't start the divot using the pilot hole thingy. It was just... But we drilled a very hard stone. Very, very hard stone. I'm using that thing. Thing. It was worth it. I hope somebody enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, however long it is, 
just me torturing myself. I don't think I've ever been more frustrated in any video that I've ever made. <laughs> These are fun. Does anybody even care? I think I care. When people tell me that, you know, they're drilling turquoise without power tools and stuff, I think that's really cool. Now, Diamond Burr, that's uh, kind of everything. Just uh, the bow is just a means of spinning the Diamond Burr back and forth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. Um, if you have any ideas for making this better, let me know. Are there any better just bow drills out there? Is more weight better? Thanks, folks. Love you. See you soon.